Hello Westman and welcome to one more edition of Cafe Diversity. This show is brought to you by Westman Immigrant Services and WCGTV. My name is Jaime Chinchilla. I am the Cultural Diversity Facilitator for Westman Immigrant Services. And this show will take you every week in a journey to meet the diverse people that live in Westman. We hear here every week about their stories, their background, and also their many ways in which they contribute to our communities. Today I have the pleasure to have here, uh, Carol Harvey. She is the coordinator of the entry program at Westman Immigrant Services. We have also Jack Roberts, who is a community nurse with the 7th Street uh, Health Access Center. And we have uh, Lemene Abebe, who is a student at Westman Immigrant Services, and as well as uh, Cynthia Fuentes, who is also a student at Westman Immigrant Services. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, every week we talk about um, topics that have to do with newcomers and we've talked a lot about Westman Immigrant Services and the amazing job that they do at, in our community. You're part of Westman Immigrant Services, Carol. Uh, what is your job there? Uh, I'm a coordinator and teacher within the Brandon Entry Program. And that's, uh, that program is an orientation program for students who have just entered into Brandon, into the community. So you are one of the first persons that help those people when, once they come to West Maryland Services. If, if they uh, register when they, when they arrive, that's right. We do this orientation program before they go to English classes because we want to give them a real practical, a lot of practical information just to help them get started in uh, settling into Brandon. So you already mentioned um, it's an orientation program and um, but what is, what is exactly the entry program? Um, we started it nine years ago because there was an entry program in Winnipeg and they gave us uh, some, some ideas. But the idea is that it's a four week program of half days. Each uh, week has a different theme. And uh, on each week we concentrate on one of these themes, things that they could learn about their new community. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's really interesting because so many times on this set we, all, we have also talked with other people about how difficult it is to move to another country and I mean if you have gone on vacation to another country that speaks a different language and you've needed a service or something you can probably um, identify with the situation of not having the language and not knowing how everything works but that's one of the answers that's how people does it. Um, that's that's what we're trying to do is, is make it easier for them to find things that they'll need such as such as doctors or uh, how to register for different programs. That's what we're aiming to do is to make it easier for them right from the beginning. Now off cameras we were talking about the many presenters that you have at the entry program uh, every week and Jack Roberts, he is one of them. He um, kindly comes every week and presents to, for newcomers about the many services. So Jack, what is exactly your role when you go at the uh, entry class and also at the Health Access Center? Well, my role as a community health nurse is primarily health education and promotion. And so when we go to Westman Immigrant Services, we give them first of all an overview of what services we have to offer at 7th Street Health Access Center because uh, health is not just uh, your physical health right now, it's many facets uh, having to do with income, uh, education, there's many different facets that contribute to your health. And so um, we do a lot of work that way. But uh, after we've given a brief overview of what we do at 7th Street, uh, we go into things like Manitoba Health, what services are covered, why it's important to have a Manitoba Health card. Um, you have to present it when you go to see a physician. The differences between the culture where you've come from and what you can expect here in Manitoba. Now, I probably started with the um, second question, but the first one should be, uh, what is the Health Access Center? Because many people probably are familiar with, with the center, but um, I understand that it's not only, uh, it, it doesn't only service uh, immigrant people, but it's open to the general public. Yes, it's a service that's open to anyone, 
and it's the variety of services we offer that try to address the different uh, facets of health. We have um, myself as a community health nurse involved with health education promotion and uh, next door to me we have a nurse practitioner who does many of the functions that a doctor can do. Uh, we have social workers, very importantly we have cultural facilitators that uh, service the Hispanic population and the Chinese Mandarin speaking population at this point in time. So it sounds like a very busy place for It can be very busy. Um, things like addictions, mental health, housing, all these things um, contribute to your health or lack of it. Well, we're, we're coming back to uh, talk more in detail about all, all this, but uh, first I want to introduce uh, Lemene. Lemene is having today his first ever interview in, in English and he's just um, he just arrived to Canada a few weeks ago, I understand. Yeah. Where, when did you come to Canada? I um, come January 25th. In January 25th. So you had to go through this terrible winter that we just had. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for being here. And as I said, um, you are a new student of Westman Immigrant Services. Yes. You're doing really well because when I was first here the first couple of weeks, I wouldn't be on a TV show speaking English. Now. Where do you come from originally? Uh, I am from Ethiopia. From Ethiopia, that's yes. Africa. Africa. And, um, Ethiopia, Africa. How long have you learned English? Uh, in Westman, immigrant, immigrant service. So you for one month. One month. Uh, yeah. Wow, I think that's amazing. The same uh, applies for um, Cynthia. She's from El Salvador originally. Yes. Uh, where are you from in El Salvador? What city? I'm from Tonacatepeque. It's a small town. Tonacatepeque. Did yes. I say it right? Good. Yeah. Um, so how small is the town? Because Brandon is also small. Is it smaller or yeah. is it bigger? It's smaller. Okay. So my question that I, I always uh, ask for newcomers, and it seems to be a simple question for a lot of people, but for us immigrants it's not how do you feel in Canada? It's very good. I like it. <laughs> so far? Yeah. How do you feel about the weather? Uh, the weather is it's so difficult, but... <laughs> yeah, and the same for you, Cynthia? Yeah, it was like a shock. <laughs> With good. cold. Um, so, Cynthia, when did you come to Canada? Lemene was saying a um, couple of uh, months, yeah. uh, since January. How about you? I came on March 21st, yeah, just a um, month ago. Okay, and um, both Lemene and Cynthia, have you taken the uh, entry class already? Or yes. are you going to classes? No, I take it already. Okay, and you too? Do you yeah. finish entry class? I take it. Uh, I finish okay. three months. What do you think about ent entry class? Uh, it's it's uh, very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned uh, about hospital, about police, mm -hmm. about bus, how can I go to own bus, how can I use a uh, number of bus, mm -hmm. and uh, I can get um, so many things well, from I, Westman Immigrant Service. I yeah. can say that some of those things I, I don't even know, and I have been here for seven years. Maybe mm -hmm. I should go to entry. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Cynthia, uh, what's your favorite part of entry class? What was your favorite? I like everything. Mm -hmm. I learned many things about Brandon and about Canada. Mm -hmm. I learned uh, which places can I go for fun. I learned about the health system. Mm -hmm. So, Carol, um, I think with uh, Lemene and Cynthia, we can see how important this is because, um, as I was saying before, it's a whole process. It's not just going, visiting another country. It's you know, moving your whole life and your whole um, aspects of that life to, to a different country. And that means that um, most of times it's going to be a different process for everything, work, health, school. Um, when did entry classes start? You mentioned before. Um, we started in Brandon. This is we're in. We've just finished the sixth year now of entry program, mm -hmm. and uh, because there was a need to give newcomers uh, some information, and it's more efficient to do it with a group. And uh, as I mentioned, we had a model from Winnipeg, so we set it up 
that each week has one theme. The first week is called Welcome to Brandon, and we talk about uh, banking and, and uh, bus and, th as, as they mentioned, place, practical places to go in Brandon that, that they might be looking for, shopping, how all that works. And then the second week is health, and that's where Jack comes in. Uh, we talk about the health system for that week. The third week is employment and education, and uh, talking about pra uh, practices for looking for work, but also the school system. We have community presenters from the school system so that they, uh, those families that are registering their children know how to go about it and what to expect. And then the last week is law and Canadian laws. And we have, uh, again, community presenters such as Brandon Police Service come and uh, give an overview of some of the laws that might be a little different from mm -hmm. what they're used to. I, I find it fascinating because you know, when you're in a, in a situation like this, you will probably learn all this uh, with experience and with your everyday life. And also I understand that Western Immigrant Services has uh, settlement facilitators that will help them. But entry class does it when it's must needed. Right? The first couple of weeks, uh, first few months when people are here and are facing all those challenges. That's, that's what we want to do is to give them the overview and, and uh, things that would be the same for every newcomer and then that allows the settlement facilitators to concentrate on specific individual needs that a, that a newcomer might mm -hmm. have. But uh, if we can help by giving some general information through the entry program, yeah. that's and what we're looking to do. Of course, and things like health, for example, are, you know, it, it's needed so immediately as well as you know, knowing some of the basic uh, rules and laws in Canada because you don't want to go on the street, let's say, driving and doing the wrong thing just because you didn't know. That's right. That's right. So you said, you mentioned that uh, it's a two-week or four-week program? It's a four-week program, so we have those four themes that I mentioned, and uh, it's half-day classes. It's not, not a full day, but th through those four weeks, one day each of those weeks, there are community presenters and interpreters, because I should say that there are people from who, newcomers who know quite a bit of English, um, Cynthia and Lemony are doing very well with their English. There are others who come uh, virtually just beginning with English. And so we have them all together. So one, one day each week there's, there are interpreters to make sure that the information is understood. And then the rest of the week, because my background is as a teacher as well, um, we, we practice and we talk about the theme, but using a kind of English as an additional language practices. So that it's not an English class, but it's a chance to get more mm -hmm. familiar with some of these words and vocabulary that we do while giving this information. So they get introduced not only to you know what life is and different services that they can get, in, but also to the English classes themselves. They get so. kind of a taste of what <coughs> English classes will be like. And then once they've completed that four weeks, they are uh, assessed to find the very best English class for their level, and then they go right on to English class. Now, I was joking before about someone like me. I, I have been here for eight uh, years now, and I never went to entry class. Could I go to entry class? You would be more than welcome. But I, I would have to agree. I, when we started setting, setting this up, I had lived in Brandon. I've always lived in Canada, and I had lived in Brandon for over 20 years. I learned some things about our own community because uh, uh, some things you just aren't aware of, and so I have, a, I think, a, a bigger picture now of, of every part, different parts of our community. And also, the reason I ask is because I understand that you also have offer, um, you also offer um, something called the Entry Express. What is the Entry Express? That's right. Um, because uh, many of the people, as I mentioned, are just beginning to learn English, we we try to take it slowly over the four-week period. But there are certainly newcomers who are very fluent, such as yourself, and uh, they are more than welcome to come to an Entry Express program, which is a one-day program. And it's simply uh, the key information on each of those themes, as well as some community tours, which we also do with the Entry. And we're going to go back to the tours uh, later. Okay. Now, uh, Jack, something that I think is really interesting is you were mentioning a different set of 
uh, topics that you deal with when you go to entry class, what do you find is the most important thing to know for a newcomer in terms of health and health services? Uh, I believe the importance, again, the use of the mental health card because so many services are not available unless you do present that card. So always to ensure that they carry the card with them. Um, for me, it's about as much learning from the newcomers as it is them learning from me because I find it such an interesting uh, culturally to f find out what life is like, the differences between our health system and theirs from wherever they've come from. Uh, so even for me to go down to Mexico two years ago and walk into a marketplace where there was a pharmacy where I could buy just about anything over the counter. Mm -hmm. Whereas here you can't get any drugs without going to the doctor, getting a prescription and paying for them and paying a fairly high price. So just differences between our culture and other cultures is, is mm -hmm. very different for me. So talking about those differences, uh, you were mentioning before that you work uh, besides uh, a few cultural facilitators that help to you know the, that communication process smoother how does it work with cultural facilitators uh, the cultural facilitators we have at 7th street are there primarily for interpretive services they work with the other care providers um, but they work um, in the community with the new immigrants and as well they help the immigrants understand our culture uh, they put on some educational seminars, uh, for example, you know, how to be a good tenant, um, again, working with our housing workers. Um, it's all very interrelated. Mm -hmm. But they do uh, provide a lot of services, again, with each care provider at our center. Uh, for example, I have people come in that need to fill out forms for a medical appointment or for a diagnostic test, and their English does not provide for that so they come in with a cultural facilitator and together we will fill up the necessary forms we're using the cultural facilitator for interpretive services but uh, primarily um, they help us a great deal by helping us to understand the other cultures so what um, what languages or cultures are available with your uh, cultural facilitators at, at uh, the access center well primarily we started out uh, at first with um, Amharic because we had a lot of Ethiopian people coming in to work. Uh, we also had a Ukrainian-Russian interpreter. And now we primarily deal with the Hispanic-speaking population and Chinese-Mandarin-speaking population. And as well, we do subscribe to a service called CanTalk. So I always um, stress with our entry program presentation that if you have any doubts, you can come to our center. We can have a translator and interpreter on the telephone in a very short period of time so that English is not primarily a good language for you to co communicate in, we can provide that service in your language and uh, help get to the bottom of your problems, find out what you need and help you get to where you need to help. So uh, this is really interesting because that all the same information that you're uh, telling me today, you probably take um, your time on your presentations to deliver it to the uh, newcomers. Do you find that the people that uh, go to the entry class are more likely to get the services from the Health Access Center after your presentation? We do see people come in. Um, again, we have some amenities that can be used, computers, internet, telephone, photocopy, fax. A lot of the people come in that use our um, faxing and photocopying services so that they can uh, make copies of uh, important documents, documents that need to be sent away. Now, you were mentioning before that you also um, do, do all the services for the general public. Everyone can come to the Health Access yes. Center. How, um, what is the percentage of uh, newcomers on your client um, um, base? Well, because Roughly. we have the interpretive services, we do see a lot of uh, newcomers that are beginning to work at Maple Leaf. And uh, it's hard to put a percentage on it. Mm -hmm. We do see a significant number because we have the uh, interpretive services for the Mandarin-speaking population and the Hispanic. So the, the point I want to get to is that I think Health Access Center seems to be a key um, organization in, in the community, in, in the downtown area for, uh, for our community in general, but also for newcomers besides Westman Immigrant Services. And language services are so important. I know our uh, cultural facilitators do work with other agencies within the RHA. Uh, with public health, with certain departments in the hospital to provide those language supports. So, 
before I move uh, to Lemene and Cynthia again, one more question for you would be, uh, you work uh, besides, uh, together with West Wing Immigrant Services, and what other organizations do you partner with in order to deliver these important services? Well, we work primarily within the RHA itself, but we do partner with other agencies outside. Uh, we work a great deal with Employment Income Assistance, uh, with the Friendship Center for the Native Population. Um, anybody who wants to make use of our services, we do a lot of outreach with Samaritan House and Food Bank. Yeah, it's basically wherever we can All over the service. place. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important to make, maintain those partnerships because if uh, we can't provide a service, we'd like to be able to direct people or help them get to the people that can provide the services they need. And I think this is a very good example of, of that, exactly how you work together with entry, you know, to go and present and make sure that people get the information in their own languages. I think it's really a, a, a great community service. Now, Lemene, yeah. you seem like you want to talk. Uh, so you, you were telling me you come from Ethiopia. Yeah. Right, and um, how is the weather in Ethiopia? The weather is uh, not like Canada. No, it's very good for the weather, mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, three months rain mm -hmm. um, months. As well as all time, not no rain. So rain or, or not no rain. And um, I, I always do this question because uh, it's same for me. My uh, my country has uh, beautiful weather. But I'm here because I have better opportunities here in many ways, in many, in many things. How about you? What 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 do you use to do in your country? Well, what's your your job? Uh, my job is, is there. Uh, I am an artist, traditional music player. Oh really? Yeah, and also I maintain computers. So have you had the opportunity to make music in Canada? Uh, so far? No, it's uh, not yet, but I'm trying to find. I'm sure you will find them. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, How about you, Cynthia? Well, what's your, uh, what was your job uh, back in El Salvador? I work in a lab. I, I'm a lab technician in my country. A lab technician? So yes. what kind of laboratory? Because I process human samples. I take blood and okay. stuff like that. So I imagine that for in order to do that you had to go to school back in El Salvador. Um, are you planning to find the same kind of job here? Yes, I want to study here and uh, get a license mm -hmm. to do what I learn in my country. And I think you're right on your way because the first thing you have to have is English and your English is very good. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning that you were here, uh, that you came to Canada um, how long ago again, sorry? Uh, one month and one week. And um, with that short time, I imagine that you also took English lessons back home. Yeah, when I was a child. In my country, I studied two years, but I didn't practice uh, since seven years ago. Okay, so you took um, English at, at your school or uh, with private lessons? Private. It's, um, is it the um, English language, is it available at the schools in Salvador? Yes, it's available since uh, seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So, Lemene, um, I asked the same question to Cynthia. What was your favorite presentation at the entry class? Oh, I learned all things. Uh, uh, I like uh, Carol very well. She she uh, talking uh, English is very clear and I uh, understand what she mm -hmm. say and what uh, she teach us. And now talking about English teaching, are you going to English classes after uh, you finish entry? Are yeah, you? now I learned. Also yeah. at Westman Immigrant Services? Yeah, Westman is level four. Um, I'm learning level what is the four. schedule of the classes? Um, do you go every day or during the weekends? I, d I go every day. Every day. At yeah. what time in the morning? Morning, uh, 8.45. Okay, starting. so it's going like going back to school, right? Yeah. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. I like okay. it very much. So, um, Carol, I think um, with Cynthia and Lemene, as I said before, we, we, we can see how important it is and also how encouraging it is because I can imagine what it would be like if you get to a country and you're left on your own to learn all those things. Um, 
What are the plans for entry? Um, we know that you know, immigration fluctuates in numbers, and, and, but we've seen in the last couple of years a big expansion of the whole organization. West Miami Services moved to a, a newly renovated building on Pacific Avenue. So what, what are the, the plans for entry program? I think we, we're trying to make entry program flexible, so to depend on the number of newcomers that need the service. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one time in the early years, maybe the second year we had entry, that there were many newcomers came right all together, so we offered entry in the morning. We had another group in the afternoon and one in the evening. Now uh, it's a little bit slower and we just have one in the morning, but I think the plan is just to keep us flexible and to meet mm -hmm. the needs of the newcomers as they are arriving. So basically accommodate in the offering of the course to what, whatever is happening in terms of what... That's right. Know. If if more people come that are very fluent in English and we need to do more entry express, we will do that or, to try, as you say, to accommodate what's, what's needed. Now, um, you were mentioning before a few of the presenters that you have, but now I, want, I would like to go more in detail as, for example, what what is the information that Health Access Center brings? We already heard about that, you know. How about some of the other presenters, such as the police and um, the school system? Yes, I, I, I don't want to forget anybody, but th so the first week when we say welcome to Brandon, uh, the key presenters are the different programs that are offered at Westman Immigrant Services. So representatives uh, come and explain what their program is that is offered to newcomers. But then uh, during Health uh, and Safety Week, as well as Jack, we have people who come from CERC, the Sexuality Education Resource Center, because it's about healthy living again. We have Brandon Neighborhood Renewal Corporation for the Community Gardens come and explain how that works as well. Uh, during the law week, we've had input, and in the past, we've had some presentations from uh, the legal aid services as well as, and we've had input from the fire department as well. It's law and safety. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the community police come once a month as well. Um, employment and education week, Ben comes, uh, Ben is our employment facilitator, and he does a, a special presentation. Uh, on workplace finding a job and practices. And then uh, we also have a representative from Brandon School Division to come and talk about the schools. And then we have uh, also one presentation on cultural adaptation. And, and uh, all of these people are coming, changing cultures. So we have one a month. Someone's, you have done it as well, uh, mm -hmm. quite a few times for us to help people understand what is common, a common experience for many people when they move to a new culture and how they can adapt uh, to a, a different culture. Well, uh, and I think you've done an amazing job putting all this together. It's really like a, a very good package of information for people and, you know, I, I can see people without this kind of help. So. Uh, well, I thank you. I, I, would, I would really say it, it's definitely a community uh, project, we depend a lot on the presenters and the, and the, the community input f from the community and uh, basing it based on what we have heard that the newcomers are looking for mm -hmm. and the kind of information that they And need. I think we also have to thank people uh, like Jack that have to you know, take their time to come Absolutely. and do this. And, um, I want to say thanks for everybody for being here today. Thanks for letting people know about the entry program and about all the wonderful work that you do with the community. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is Cafe Diversity. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week with more information on the newcomer community and the organizations that work with them. Thanks. <laughs>